Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. I want to do something a little bit unusual today, and that is risotto e fagioli, which is risotto with beans. The Italians are not known for combining rice with beans. You see it a lot in Spanish cooking and Latin cuisine, but the Italians know, except supposedly in one region of Italy, Tuscany, where they supposedly use black-eyed peas for this. I'm going to use cannellini beans because that's what I've got. I really, really love pasta fagioli or pasta e fagioli, which is pasta and beans. So I'm thinking risotto e fagioli, that sounds like it might be pretty good. So that's what I want to make today. Let's get into the ingredients I'm going to be using for making my risotto and beans. For the beans, I started off with one cup of dried beans. These are cannellini beans, as I mentioned, that I soaked overnight in salted water. The water had about a tablespoon of salt in it. The dry beans weighed between seven and eight ounces, which is about 200 to 225 grams before they were soaked. The trick with beans is, the secret is, or I don't know if that it's a secret, but soak the beans in salted water because the salt will replace magnesium, I think it's magnesium, in the skin, which will help you to have a more tender skin. But don't cook the beans in salted water because the salted water will make the inside of the beans mealy. So you soak them in salted water, you cook them in unsalted water, and then after they're cooked, you salt them to taste. So there's my cannellini beans. I'm going to be using roughly two tablespoons of olive oil. I have one clove of garlic, one large clove, and I'm just going to basically crush that and put it in the pot. It's going to be removed after the beans are cooked. I have one fresh Roma tomato. You can use two canned if you'd like. One teaspoon of dry thyme is okay. I had to go to the store to buy the tomato, so I bought the thyme. I'm using fresh thyme. And then salt and pepper to taste again after the beans are cooked. For the risotto, I have two large cloves of garlic, one teaspoon again of thyme, five tablespoons of olive oil. I have two cups here of arborio rice. That's about 15 ounces by weight or 425 grams. I have four cups of chicken stock. You can use chicken stock or beef stock. If you're vegan, you can use vegetable stock. That's about, this is my frozen stock, by the way. That's why they look like this. I make my own stock. The um, volume in milliliters is about 950, if I'm calculating that correctly. And then salt and pepper to taste. And then finally, to finish the risotto, six to eight tablespoons of olive oil, six to eight tablespoons of either Parmesan or Romano cheese. You can garnish it a little bit before it goes on the table, but mostly you put the cheese and the olive oil on the table, and then your guests garnish their risotto with olive oil and or cheese if they like. So those are the ingredients for making my risotto with beans. I've been bringing up water to a boil here in a large pot. This is about a quart and a half, six cups, which is that, what's that? That's a little bit less than a one and a half liters of water. It's not salted. So I'm putting my beans in there. Again, the beans were soaked overnight. I chopped that tomato and seeded it. The time I'm just going to, I tied it together with a string and I'm just going to put it in twigs and all. The um, garlic, I just kind of smashed it very lightly with the back of a wooden spoon because I'm going to pull that out later on. The thyme, by the way, the leaves will just kind of melt off, fall off, and I'll just have the twigs to remove. And then I'm going to put in a couple of tablespoons of my olive oil here. Bring this back up to a boil. You want to stir this very gently at this point because you don't want to damage the beans too much. And once this has come back up to the boil, I'm going to reduce the heat to low. I'll probably take one of these grates off the back of the stove and stack it above the other one. I do that if I want to get a pot up off the heat. I'll stack two of them. I'll put a cover on this 
and then simmer this at the lowest setting for a good hour and a half to get those beans well cooked. My beans now have been cooking for an hour and a half. You probably can't see it, but that water is barely moving. I did stack my grates, my hobs, so this is up off the heat a little bit. The reason why you want to keep that water moving so slowly see how my beans are still whole they're not all broken up the more your water agitates and knocks those beans around the more likely it's going to break these beans up you're going to get some cracking of the skin but you want to try to keep the beans as whole as possible so that it'll look nice in the finished dish so now i'm ready to drain these carefully and then i'll be ready to start preparing to cook the risotto i need to um pull the leaves off my thyme here. You basically work backwards and then chop them up. When I say work backwards, start at the end, the top end, and then just kind of peel the, the thyme leaves off the stem, like so. If they'll come off. Yeah, they go on. Oh, by the way, I got an idea. Look for items that in the store that you can use for other purposes. I found this mat in the warehouse store. This is actually supposed to be a drainage mat. Put this beside your sink and you wash your flat wearing your glasses and stack this on this. But I saw it and thought, no, that's the perfect mat for a cutting board so that the cutting board can't slide. So a sliding cutting board can be kind of dangerous in your kitchen. Oh gosh, that thyme just smells so delicious. It's nothing like fresh thyme. Well, fresh any herbs. Again, this recipe calls for dried herbs, but if you, can, if you have fresh, why not use them? I had to go to the store anyway, so I just bought some fresh thyme when I was there. Okay, I got some leaves off here. I'm going to just kind of chop this up fairly fine. I need about a teaspoon, but since I'm working with fresh, maybe half a teaspoon, between half and three quarters. will be enough. I'm just thinking the fresher herbs will have a stronger, richer flavor than the dried herbs. Okay, I'm gonna just use that much right there. That's pretty much three quarters. The rest of this, I'll set that aside and lay it out maybe and dry it. For later on. Okay, the garlic, you can mince the garlic with the herbs if you want, or you can run it through a garlic press. That's what I'm going to do as far as chopping my garlic. I've got a larger saucepan on the stove here. Over medium, medium high heat. The recipe calls for five tablespoons of oil. That seems like a lot, but what am I? What do I know? I'm only the cook. Okay, my oil has come up to the heat. So I'm gonna put my garlic in there. Stir that around and then add my Time, reduce the heat to low and just kind of sizzle that. This pan retains a lot of heat, so that's why I'm reducing it to low. This is a ceramic, French made ceramic saucepan that a dear friend gave to me. I'm going to let that cook for about one minute. Okay, that's been simmering now. I'm going to add my rice. This is our Boreal rice again. From what I saw on a TV show, that the issue with arborio rice is that it supposedly has an extra thick layer of starch on the outside. 
And as you work with it, I'm bringing my heat back up to medium. And I'm going to saute this for about four minutes, stirring this constantly. In fact, let me set my timer. Okay. That supposedly arboreal rice has this extra thick starchy layer on the outside, and as you work with it, making risotto, that's what gives the risotto its creamy texture. If you can believe everything you see on TV, and I think that's true. Okay, so I've got to stir this for about four minutes while this is sauteing lightly over medium heat. I transferred this to a larger pan because it occurred to me as once I started going that I was going to have to eventually add beans to this and there's no way I'm going to be able to get beans into that pan. Okay, in the meanwhile I have been heating my stock just to a boil. in another pan and I'm going to be adding it one ladle at a time. I've heated three three cups of the stock. I'm reserving one for the final finish when the beans get added. When making risotto you work w with the rice constantly adding stock a little at a time until the stock is absorbed like that and then you add more. And the reason why you want to keep your stock just to boiling on the side is because you don't want to add cold stock to your rice. You'll stop the cooking. Then you have to wait for it to come up to the boil again. So you just use one ladle at a time and you stir this constantly, constantly, constantly while you're cooking the rice. And you keep going until the liquid is absorbed, and then you add another ladle of stock until you use up all of your stock. It takes about 18 to 20 minutes to do this total. I'm going to reduce my heat down here to about a medium low because I want to just simmer this maybe even low. I want to simmer this just to get this liquid absorbed a little at a time. All right, so I've got a while to go here to get my stock used up. I'm coming up to the end now of my cooking time. This is just over 15 minutes this has been cooking. These are my beans and the tomatoes. These have drained. Now, very gently, I want to stir these in. See how those beans are nice and whole? There's some cracking, but they're not all broken up, which is what I wanted. So this has to be done slowly. I did taste it for salt, and I know it's going to need salt. So there's about half a teaspoon or so of salt. And I'm going to grind some black pepper in there. and start working in some of this remaining stock. A little at a time now. And I am warm. If you looked at the calendar earlier at the beginning of the video, you saw that it's winter time, January, February, March. But here, for some reason, in Southern California, we are having a warming spell. I got up to 85 degrees here today. I'm not complaining. That's what I moved to California for. Okay, so I have the last of my stock to work in slowly, and then this will be almost ready to serve. Okay, so there we are. I've pretty much absorbed the last of that stock in there. It's creamy without being wet. It's not dry, which you don't want a dry rice when you're making risotto. The beans look excellent. 
the tomatoes have almost pretty much dissolved right into it. So now I'm going to let this sit now. I'm going to turn my heat off. Let this sit for a few minutes just to cool down enough because I'm going to work in some cheese. If I put the cheese in when it's too hot, it'll melt and become stringy. So I don't want to put the cheese in there yet. And then this will be ready to serve. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, and I did taste this again for salt. It needed just a touch more, so maybe I added another quarter teaspoon of salt, and I think it's perfect just the way it is. Okay, to finish this, I'm going to drizzle just a little more of my extra virgin olive oil in there. Not a lot. That's enough. What's that? A couple tablespoons at the most. And this is some of my cheese. And then just gently stir that in there. This pan has had a chance to cool down because here I am just holding the metal. That's what I want because I don't want that pan to be so hot that it'll melt the cheese and make it all stringy. All right, there it is. That's my risotto. Ah, and that looks so good. My last step is to taste that and see how good it is. I'm ready to see how my risotto e fagioli or whatever it is, risotto with beans tastes. That is heavenly. That's exactly what I would expect from risotto. So there it is. Risotto and beans. The beans are just perfectly tender. Ah. All right. Excuse me. I got to go enjoy my risotto. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.